Shalom. We are looking at the Gospel according to John. We are investigating the Hebraic background, and today we come to the final chapter of the book, chapter 21. After these things, Yeshua showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I am going fishing. They said unto him, We also go with you. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Yeshua stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Yeshua. Then Yeshua said unto them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Yeshua loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Yeshua said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Yeshua said unto them, Come and dine. None of the disciples there asked him, who are you, knowing that it was the Lord? Yeshua then came and took bread and gave them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Yeshua showed himself to his disciples, after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Yeshua said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. So this is a very similar scene uh, as in Luke 5. If you have been at this channel any amount of time, you probably have already seen the video about the 153 fish, but I will put a link to that video in the description notes. Continuing in verse 17. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, do you love me? And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. Yeshua said unto him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say unto you, when you were young, you girded yourself and walked whither you would. But when you shall be old, you shall stretch forth your hands and another shall gird you and carry you whither you would not. This he spoke, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken thus, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Yeshua loved following, which also leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrays you. So I'm sure you have already heard the teaching about the different words that Yeshua and Peter used to express this love. And in English, we really only have one word. We have a word like, but love for that kind of relationship, which can be between a man and a woman in a marriage or between friends. And that word in Greek is agapao. There's also a word more closely related to the friendship kind of love, which is phileo. Now in Hebrew, there's really only one word for love, which is ahav, ahava, this root. Interestingly, there is another word for friend, which comes from the root ra'a, resh ayin he. When used as a noun, it just has the two letters, re'a, and it means friend or neighbor. But when used as a verb, it becomes the word to shepherd. So it's a very interesting play on words between these, do you love me, feed my sheep, be the shepherd. Continuing in verse 21, Peter, seeing him, said to Yeshua, Lord, and what shall this man do? Yeshua said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. 
Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Yeshua said not unto him, He shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple which testifies of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Yeshua did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So closing out the chapter, John echoes Ecclesiastes 12.12, 12, And further, by these my son shall be admonished of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Here are a few afterthoughts which occurred to me later. In the course of the book, there are two women receive and spread the message. The first was a Samaritan woman at the well, and the second was Mary at the tomb. And this puts us in mind of Psalm 68, 11. In the Hebrew, you see, the Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it. The company of those that published it is Hamivasrot, the root for the good news, comes from the root basar, which means flesh, because flesh is fresh. When you buy it at the marketplace, you don't want anything stale and old and rotten. And also, it reflects the incarnation of the gospel being the good news. But this word is in the feminine. The company that brings the good news is in the feminine in Psalm 68. The Last Supper, we see that it is John who is leaning on the breast of Yeshua and Prompted by Peter, he asks Yeshua the question. And John is the youngest, and that we see is a tradition at the Passover table, that the youngest is that one who asks the question. In John 3, 6, when Yeshua speaks to Nicodemus, he says, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. And this is an echo all the way from Genesis 1, that like brings like kind. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So like brings forth like kind. Also, there are seven miracles in the book of John, and the first two are actually named and numbered. I suppose that is to set you up that you count the rest of them. But seven, of course, is a very prevalent number, and it's interesting in the sequence, we can see that they actually track with the seven Levitical feasts in shadow type and picture. So the first is Yeshua turns the water to wine, and that fits nicely with Passover. We see the first plague of, in Egypt was turning the water to blood, and Yeshua redeems that by turning the water to wine. The second miracle is that he raises a nobleman's son. Now he goes back to Cana of Galilee, the same place where he turned the water to wine, to perform this miracle. It kind of puts us in mind of the very last plague, which was the death of the firstborn. And here Yeshua saves a child from death at the very last minute. The next miracle is the healing at Bethesda, and this corresponds to the first Omer. This festival is often called a first fruits festival, and it is a first fruits festival. It is the beginning of the barley harvest. It is the day on which Yeshua was raised from the dead. Leviticus 23 is the only Old Testament mention of this festival. And what we see is this first healing of this kind. It's the beginning of a harvest of people that are coming to believe as a result of the miracles. The next miracle is the feeding of the 5,000. And what we see is that the people are coming to Yeshua because of what they see in terms of the healing of diseases. The man at Bethesda, he was the first. And now we see many, many, many coming in as we continue in the harvest in the festival of weeks. The next miracle is Yeshua walking on water. And this corresponds to the festival of trumpets in this way. 
The Festival of Trumpets is on the first of the seventh month, the month of Tishrei, as it's called in the Jewish calendar. It was not always the seventh month. It became the seventh month when God told Moses that the month of Aviv, Nisan, the springtime month, would be the beginning of the year. Previously, the beginning of the year was thought to have been at this time period of trumpets. It is correlated with the creation of the world. And what do we see at the creation of the world? We see the Lord over the depths, over the sea, taking authority over the water. The sixth miracle, Yeshua heals a man who is born blind. And in the midst of that, his disciples ask him, who sinned, this man or his parents? Yeshua says, neither. He doesn't answer the question of who sinned. But in healing the blind man, he makes atonement for whoever it was who did sin and for all of our sins. So the healing of the man born blind is correlated to the festival of atonement. Finally, Yeshua raises Lazarus from the dead, and at Tabernacles, we know there's a time of ingathering that all souls who belong to Yeshua will be with him in the ultimate ingathering in the millennial kingdom. Pray that you have enjoyed this study on the book of John and that it has been helpful, edifying for you. Until next time, Tasimita and Nayim al Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.